Five months ago, the people of Iran erupted into protest after the death of 22-year-old Masha Amini last year. She was killed while in government custody for allegedly violating Iran's dress code requiring women to wear a hijab. And while the unrest has mostly settled, we are still seeing bold acts of defiance seen every day by the women of Iran. The New York Times reports that women there are showing off their hair, openly rebelling against the country's law. One mother of a daughter who does not wear a hijab is quoted saying, I respect my daughter's choice, and so should you. It's nobody's business. Joining us now is senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Kareem Sajapur. He focuses on Iran and U.S. foreign policy toward the Middle East. I guess my first question to you, Kareem, would be, where does this sort of rebellion slash modernization, however you want to look at it, stand right now? There were so many reports of uh, arrests and torture and people being abused for protesting. And yet there's also stories of sort of quietly protesting, just not wearing the hijab and going through the day and making a stand about it. Uh, Mika, one of the great scholars of revolutions, Jack Goldstone, once compared revolutions to earthquakes. He said, you know, we can never mm -hmm. predict exactly when earthquakes are going to happen, but we know when countries have a lot of fault lines. And Iran is one of the most politically seismic countries in the world. Um, we, we can't predict when this eruption is going to happen, but it's clear that this is a regime which is not only politically and economically authoritarian, but also socially authoritarian. And as you mentioned from the outset, one of the very first things this regime did when it took power in 1979 was to subjugate Iranian women, to force them to veil. The mandatory hijab has become one of the three pillars of this revolution now, the others being death to America and death to Israel. And as we see, the granddaughters of the 1979 revolution are more educated than their male counterparts and are going to continue to fight. So you, it, while it might be sort of settling down at this moment, you say the next eruption could be bigger, is still yet to come. This isn't over. It's not over because, as I said, uh, this is a regime which hasn't budged an inch. They believe that if you actually give in to pressure, it's not going to alleviate the pressure against you. It's going to embolden people more. So they haven't ceded an inch to their population, and they're now overseeing one of the world's worst economies, uh, rampant inflation, as I said, uh, total lack of political freedoms and also lack of social freedom. So I mm. expect, as we see the weather pick up, the weather become warmer in Iran, uh, I expect we will start to see the protests pick up as well. Kareem, even as we've watched uh, women rip off their headscarves, that story was incredibly inspiring. They are still providing support to Russia uh, in their war against Ukraine, and they are still working towards acquiring a nuclear weapon. So as somebody who's studied the, the, the regime for so many years, what should we make of that? It feels like a contradiction. Uh, it's a great question, Jen. And I think these protests in Iran are one of those uncommon instances in which American values and American interests overlap in the Middle East. It's not often that that happens, and, and, and for the reasons you mentioned, Jen. So if you're looking at the world from the eyes of the, the White House, Iran poses at least five, six daily challenges. Obviously, their nuclear ambitions, their ambitions in the Middle East. Uh, on any given day, they're trying to assassinate former senior Trump administration officials like Mike Pompeo and John Bolton. Iran has taken more American hostages than any country uh, in the world, and they're providing drones and missiles to Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. And so on one, one, on one hand, we do have to obviously contend with all of those uh, threats and challenges. But at the same time, if we were to see political change inside Iran, it actually could resolve all, if not most, of those challenges, because you have a, a population in Iran which is not anti-American. They, they want to have a better relationship with the United States. And so supporting the cause of change in Iran is not just something uh, nice to do. It would be a, a huge win, geopolitical win for the United States to see political transformation mm. inside Iran. 
senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Kareem Sajapur. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it.